Dr. Sara Andreotti. I'm a marine biologist and I'm a commercial diver. I started diving at the age of 17 in Italy when I had my open water seamen's certificate. According to my parents, I was drawn toward the sea since I was able to walk. But once I started breathing underwater with my first regulator, it, the feeling of being in such an amazing, alive and different world blew my mind. And I pursued a career as a marine biologist because of this love for diving. When I decided to move to South Africa to study white shark, I had an association with the University of Stellenbosch to do my PhD here. And the goal of this work was trying to understand how many white shark were left around the South African coastline. We did that by using photographic identification technique and genetic that combined gave out the first coastline estimate of white shark in South Africa. Our estimate was in between 300 and 500 animals, which made it clear that we needed to do something more for this population, but also find a way to monitor them constantly. One of the biggest issues with these animals is that if you start looking at them without identifying them, you will double count the same individuals over and over. That's why we also develop a little software called the Identifying that allows you to quickly match the new photo of a shark with an existing database so that we can keep track of the population and understand if it's going to get better or worse over time. Unfortunately, when we published the estimate being between 300 and 500 sharks around the South African coastline, not much has been done since, and five years down the line, we stopped seeing these animals in areas that were used to be called the wild shark capital of the world. In Falls Bay, they haven't seen sharks for more than a year at a time, and that is causing a dominant effect on the entire ecosystem that is going to affect local diving company, fishery, and the balance of the ocean as a well. whole. And this is why um, these animals are so important. They are at the top of the food chain, and the genetic diversity looks really, really poor, really low. And because we don't really know yet if we can get other shark from other places to come and parentage the population here, We've got to preserve white shark in South Africa very, very, very well and a lot better than we've been doing up until now. That's why besides the photo identification and the genetic work, I've been directly involved in another project called the Shark Safe Barrier. One of the reasons for this decline and disappearance of white shark in South Africa has been the killing, active killing of white shark with shark net and drum line. Since 1937, to try and solve the shark human crisis, humans have been killing as many sharks as possible with fishing gear called shark net and drum line, so that you reduce the population of shark and then you reduce the chances of shark encountering people. That is why the shark set barrier works differently. It biomimics a forest of kelp that the shark recognized as a natural barrier and has big magnets inside this fake kelp to keep sharks out of it. These large magnets overwhelm one of the shark senses called ampullae of Laurentini. The combination of these two shark deterrent proved extremely effective and we hope we can in time replace all shark nets and drumline with this eco-friendly shark specific alternative that will keep both shark and beach cores separate. When we go out uh, to do this work on the sharks and barrier, of course it's not just me, we are a team of, of divers. The inventors of the sharks and barrier were Michael Ratzel, Dr. Tego Connell, myself, and Coral Mattia from the University of Stellenbosch. And when we have to go and dive on the site, I need the insurance to cover all the divers uh, when we 